Hello there, my name is Artur Valerievich and I teach anatomy. And today we're gonna speak about spinal nerves, about uh, dorsal branches of spinal nerves and about cervical plexus, plexus cervicalis. And we will start with the, the spinal nerve. What is that and what it consists of? As you remember, from your spinal cord, uh, there is two roots that came out of your spinal cord, uh, like anterior and posterior root, radix anterior and radix posterior. Radix anterior, anterior root, it consists of uh, fibers of uh, motor neurons that are located in anterior horns of gray matter of spinal cord, uh, cord anterior. Posterior root consists of fibers of sensory neurons. Their body are located, if you remember, in ganglion spinale. There is spinal ganglion, and the spinal ganglion spinale, it consists of body of sensory neurons, and their uh, axons uh, go into uh, dorsal root and enters uh, dorsal horn of gray matter. So when uh, dorsal and ventral roots join, like on the level of intervertebral opening, they unite and create actually narrow spinalis. So this will be uh, narrow spinalis, spinal nerve. And uh, uh, but uh, the scheme, if we talk about superior or inferior, like segments of your spinal cord, if we talk about uh, segments from eight cervical until like second lumbar, there will be something more. You remember from C8 to L2, you have in gray matter, you have also cornu laterale, lateral horn of gray matter. That consists of another nucleus, of nucleus uh, intermedial lateralis, intermedial lateral uh, nucleus, that consists of body of neurons, and these neurons are sympathetic neurons. And their uh, fibers also enters anterior root. This will be a uh, scheme of sigma of spinal nerves from uh, C8 to L2. So narrow spinalis, spinal nerve uh, is uh, located in intervertebral opening between superior and inferior uh, vertebra, and we have. 30 32 pairs of spinal nerve as you can see them here all uh, we have like eight in cervical narrow spinalis cervicalis we have 12 pairs of thoracic uh, narrow spinalis thoracic five pairs of lumbar narrow spinalis lumbaris five pairs of sacral narrow spinalis sacralis and one or two coccygeal nerve uh, coccygeal spinal nerves, narrow spinalis coccygei. So this is your uh, all peripheral neural system. And what does spinal nerve um, divide on? When spinal nerve exit your uh, intervertebral opening, it's begin to divide. As you can see, it divides on a lot of branches. So first one here, as you can see, it come back into your spinal canal, one or even two, it calls ramus meningius. It's meningeal branch that actually come back into your spinal canal and innervates uh, everything that is in spinal canal. What is that? Vessels, all that, venous, plexuses and arteries of your spinal cord. It's uh, They innervate your meanings of spinal cord and uh, all the tissue that is in kennel. Then, as you can see, it gives another branch that go uh, forward and enters ganglion of sympathetic trunk. These uh, fibers that came from nucleus intermedial lateralis here come to anterior horn and enters spinal nerve. These fibers, they are pre-ganglionar. They pre-ganglionar. They uh, must to transmit the impulse to post-ganglionar uh, 
uh, cells and then the fibers of postganglion cells will innervate something. So uh, these preganglion uh, fibers go out from uh, your spinal nerve and enter sympathetic trunk. There will be synapse. Uh, they transmit this impulse to postganglion cells and their uh, fibers of postganglion fibers and exit like this ganglion and come back to your uh, spinal nerve. So you have here two kind of branches. It's called uh, rami communicantes grisi and rami communicantes albi. White and gray communicant branches. White communicant branches is uh, these that uh, consist of preganglionar fibers because they covered with myelin protein and, and they have like this white color. Uh, post ganglionar fibers, it's, they are not covered with myelin, so they have gray color. That's why they called rami communicant as greasy. So these uh, post ganglionar fibers enters your spinal nerve and next they go into all of your branches of your spinal nerve. They enters and anterior branch and posterior branch and even this meningeal branch. So this what we have about sympathetic fibers, preganglionar and postganglionar. And then your spinal nerve divides on two main and uh, the largest branches like anterior ramus anterior and posterior ramus posterior. Uh, actually, these two branches, they are consist of and sensory fibers that come from your uh, spinal ganglion and motor fibers that come from your anterior horn of grumet and post uh, and post ganglion are sympathetic fibers that came from your uh, ganglion tronsosympathetic. So they, they are mixed. And now we're going to speak about posterior branches, ramus dorsalis or ramus posterior of your spinal nerves. So posterior branch, uh, as you can see, go backward and they uh, go through um, like space between transverse process of your um, vertebras and enters muscles of your back and uh, divides oh, in most cases in lateral and medial branches and uh, its motor fibers supply all your muscles of your back. You remember there is a lot of them. Sensory fibers also supply these muscles and tendons. They are like uh, its proprioceptive receptive uh, fibers, you remember. And the reach the skin of your back also supply all touch, pain, pressure of your skin of your back. And uh, these sympathetic fibers reach all the vessels and also skin. You remember we have glands, we have smooth muscles and skin. So they actually, as you can see, we have like, if you have 31 or 32 spinal nerves, we will have 31, this uh, posterior branch of spinal nerves, rami dorsalis. And they actually have, uh, almost all of them have like no names. They just called, as you can see, this is rami dorsalis, this dorsal. Uh, branches of spinal nerves and that you go backward and supply all of your uh, muscles of your back. But there is a few, few special, it's a uh, superior three cervical, superior three uh, lumbar and superior three sacral. Here you have first one. So this is a posterior branch of first cervical nerve. It calls Nervous suboccipital. So it in the name, if it's suboccipital nerve, so it supply a suboccipital. Remember, it's uh, rectus posterior major, rectus posterior minor, uh, obliquus superior, obliquus inferior muscles. It's a suboccipital group of muscles, and this uh, posterior branch of first spinal nerve supply all this muscle, and it calls nervous suboccipitalis. Second, also have its name, uh, nervous occipitalis major. The greater occipital nerve, as you can see, it go upward and divides on 
branches that innervate muscles of your neck, like trapezius and splenius capitis and uh, longissimus capitis, and the uh, skin of your occiput. And in some books, uh, it's described the third no, posterior branch of C3. Uh, it calls a nerus occipitalis tertius, like third occipital nerve. It go upward. It's, uh, it's innervates, as you can see, skin of your like midline of your occiput and the neck, and also trapezius muscle. And there's these deep muscles of your spine. Remember all other cervical and uh, thoracic. They have no name. It's just uh, rami dorsalis and uh, superior tree lumbar uh, spinal nerve. Which we talk about posterior branches. As you can see, they come here. They go down here, and they have name uh, nervi cluni superioris, like superior cluneal uh, nerves. Uh, and it's like see, cluni. It's synonyms for gluteal, and they supply uh, they innervate skin of your superior gluteal region, and so do superior sacral posterior branches. Uh, they also go to this region, and they have name nervi cluni medi, like middle cluneal. Nerves that uh, innervates like middle region of uh, gluteal area. So that's all about dorsal branches. But the most interesting and most important thing in spinal nerves it's anterior branches. It's ramus anterior or ramus ventralis that are uh, will be mixed and will join like neighbor. Uh, spinal nerves and create plexuses. In cervical region, there will be plexus cervicalis. On the level of your uh, upper limb, there will be plexus brachialis. In your abdominal cavity, plexus lumbalis and uh, pelvic cavity, plexus sacralis. Anterior branches of thoracic uh, spinal nerves do not uh, unite. They do not create plexuses and they are just nervi intercostalis that's located in the intercostal spaces. So we move on to plexus cervicalis. Your first plexus that you will study from peripheral neural system, it's plexus cervicalis. Uh, as you can see, plexus cervicalis, it's created by anterior, by ventral um, branches of your spinal nerves. C1, C2, C3, and C4. Superior four cervical spinal nerves. They unite, as you can see, and create plexus cervicalis. So here is plexus cervicalis. Cervical plexus is located on deep muscles of your neck. It's located in front of your uh, transverse process of your cervical vertebras. Uh, it's, uh, it's laying on uh, your uh, scalenus muscles between anterior and middle scalenus muscle. And it have a lot of branches. But it will be easy because most of them have no special names. All branches of your cervical plexus you can divide on just motor branches, just sensory branches and mixed motor branches of your cervical plexus. They have like no own name. They call just rami muscularis. My muscle fibers, they innervate deep muscles of your neck. We have just one special thing about uh, motor fibers. It's here. It's on the cervicalis. It's cervical loop. We have 12 cranial nerve, nervous hypoglossus, that come here. And it's uh, on the level of your uh, submandibular uh, triangle. It gives this branch that calls superior root, radix superior. And it go down in front of your uh, uh, arteria carotis communis and unite here with like inferior uh, root, radix inferior, that came from, as you can see, uh, second and third spinal nerves. They unite and they create this loop that calls an cervical loop or uh, ansa cervicalis. This ansa cervicalis here. As you can see, it's located in front of neurovascular bundle, in front of your vena jugularis interna, arteria carotis communis, and nervus vagus. 
and they covered with the sheet and uh, this Anzatsurakal is located in front of the sheet. These Anzatsurakalis have like four main branches that supply uh, your infrahyoid group of muscle, musculus tirohyoidus, musculus sternotirohyoidus, sternohyoidus, and this branch to omohyoidus muscle. We have one more fibers that came from C1. It enters hypoglossal nerve, but it's not go into uh, superior root. It's going to oral cavity. And in oral cavity, it then will go out of hypoglossal nerve and supply musculus geniogeoidus, gen geniogeoid muscle. And it's all about uh, motor fibers. Sensory nerves of your cervical plexus, we have only four of them. It's easy. And you can see them here. They come out under your subcutaneous tissues uh, by um, posterior marge of sternocleidomastoid muscle, as you can see. So first one, nerves occipitalis minor. On this picture we have only, we see only a small part of it. We will see it better here. So, so this is it. Nerves occipitalis minor, lesser occipital nerve. You remember uh, from second uh, posterior uh, branch of spinal nerve, we have nerves occipitalis major. So here is the nerves occipitalis minor. It's how it go upward behind your ear and uh, in a rate like skin. It's just sensory nerve and in the right skin behind your ear. Second here. It calls nerus auricularis magnus. It's a great auricular nerve. It's go upward to your auricle and it actually supply like this inferior part of your auricle and the meatus acousticus externus and uh, maybe a small part of your parotid area. That's all. Third, it's here. It's nerus transversus coli or nerus transversus cervicus. As you can see, it go in transverse direction and uh, innervate this like anterior skin of anterior neck area. That's all. And the last one, fourth, it's this one. It's not one, it's a group of nerves that calls nervus supraclavicularis. Supraclavicular nerves, they go down, they go on clavicle here. And even as you can see, go uh, further anterior wall of thoracic cavity and the right skin under your clavicle. It's all four just sensory nerves of your cervical plexus. And the last one. I told you that we have motor, sensory, and we have one mixed nerve uh, that consists and sensory and motor uh, fibers. It's nervus phrenicus, phrenic nerve. And it have like fibers from C4, C3, and as you can see, a small part of fibers of C5. And the phrenic nerve, it's laying, as you can see, on uh, scalenus anterior muscle and go down, uh, go through apertura thoracica superior, enters thoracic cavity, then move uh, medially and uh, left and right. They are laying on your, they are directly laying on your heart. It's laying on a pericardium. It gives a rami pericardialis. Here is the pericardial branches that supply your pericardium, sensory branches. And they left and right reach your diaphragm. As you can understand, it's, it's very important nerve because it's actually these uh, nerves provide your breathing. But it's not all sensory fibers. As you can see here, small amount of sensory fibers didn't uh, end in thoracic cavity, they uh, go through diaphragm here and here and enters abdominal cavity. These branches called uh, nervi, peri uh, nervi phrenic abdominalis, phrenic abdominal nerves. It uh, go through diaphragm and enters abdominal cavity. In books you can read about left and right, but in most cases uh, right, uh, left one it ends in thoracic cavity. Uh, in most cases, we talk about right one, right phrenic nerve, right phrenic abdominal branches. Go through diaphragm, enters abdominal cavity, and enters celiac plexus, plexus celiacus. They uh, go by transit. They do not uh, transmit there. There is no postsynaptic uh, neurons there. 
is just it consists of sympathetic fibers. This uh, phrenic nerve uh, consists only of sensory fibers, so they have nothing to do in this plex celiaco, so they just go through. They go with the fibers of uh, celiac plexus uh, rich capsule of your liver and uh, peritoneum that cover your gallbladder. And this is area of innervation of these fibers from right phrenic nerve. Now you know that nerus phrenicus uh, supply your pericardium, your uh, pleura, it supply diaphragm, and also, if you talk about right one, it also innervates hepar and uh, vasocephalia. So I guess uh, that's all. So thank you for your attention. Ask me some questions, subscribe to channel, and see you later. Peace.